Well, we're at Saguaro Lake today. It's August. It's going to be 115 degrees today, but we're going after some big fish. We're up, up the lake right now, so we're hoping that we can hang into some big ones and show you how it's done. We're, flick, we're uh, using a flick shake. Something a little different that more, no, nobody shows on any of the TV shows. So, just something a little bit different. But the big fish like it. Just going to flick into some of these bushes along here just to see if there's some good fish in here. What I'm doing out here this morning is just trying some stuff up against the weeds and stuff. Hopefully where it's dark enough with a cloud cover, I'm using what they call a flick shake and I'll show you how I rig this later on in Gary, Gary's in depth. But it's just a wacky style worm with a head on it. And I'm just throwing it up against the weeds up here and just letting that sink, hoping that there's a big one still just lurking up in the shallows from the night, feeding at night. It's early in the morning up here, Saguaro. It's only 6.30 in the morning, so we'll just give it a try. They're not letting any water out right now, so sometimes that's not the best. It, the best fishing is when they actually let the water out and we have a current. So we thought we'd come up and try it, and if that don't work, we'll go back out on the main lake. I've rigged up a bait caster up here because I've been catching some nice four, five, six, seven pounders. And if I have my real light little spinning rod on, takes a while to get them in. It's a, a lot of sport, but uh, when they start jumping, those big fish, you, you lose a lot of them. Usually Cinco's work up here too, wacky styled, so. But I started using this with this head on, that way it doesn't sink so slow. It sinks a little bit faster, and if they're there and they're biting, they'll take it. So we're just gonna kinda just go along these weeds, along the trees here. We got a real nice bank for this. And we'll try a little bit of this and see if this, this doesn't work. You can see by how it's straight up and down that this stuff just drops straight down. So I'm getting as close to the trees and the brush as I can. Now I won't pull it a long time. I'll just throw it out, throw it out and let it sink fairly close to the, fairly close to the bushes. We're gonna to have to try a number of things. Some days it's real tough up here at Saguaro and some days it's not. So I'm just letting this go on a semi-tight line. I'm just following my line down. So if one does take it and I don't feel on my line will jump, it'll just twitch. And then I know I got one on. That was scary. Got hung on a little limb or something down there and it was like, you don't know when you're fishing this open hook like this if it's gonna be a, a fish or a little tree limb. Plus I'm fishing it right off into the sticks and stuff. So, you know, I may lose a few of these, but hey, you gotta go where the fish are living, you know, or where they're biting. Gotta take a chance sometimes to do this. You can't be afraid to lose a few lures or a few baits. And these things are inexpensive. They're just trick worms, just with a little head on there. A lot of those fish you see out there in the lake are jumping. Are, uh, you probably can hear them through the microphone. They're big carp. Uh, usually my way of thinking is if they're not just swirling on the bait or in the morning like this, if you hear that fish jumping like that, it's a it's usually a carp nine times out of ten. We couldn't have picked a better morning for this, I'll tell you. You know, it's gonna get up to 115 degrees today, but we got some cloud cover, so that's gonna save us. We'll be able to stay out a little bit more. A little longer. 
So where does get the traffic? We've passed a lot of guys up here fishing. Haven't saw anybody catch any yet, so. Never know, we'll keep trying. Usually, in, I may get a Texas rig out and try it too, because usually up here in these mats like this, those things will hang right under the mat, and as that thing just kind of floats, floats by or down to them, they'll take it. That just up the lake here, about a half a mile, there's our mile, Kiz Canyon Lake, and right now, they're sucking the water out of Saguaro back in the canyon this morning, instead of letting it out. It's better if they let it out, but they're sucking it back, and we're getting sucked the opposite way of what we should be going. So, boy, you'd think there'd be some nice stuff just laying down right there in the side of this, side of this, uh, Canyon wall. I'm just going to do this. Keep on pitching some of these walls because a lot of times these big fish will lay against the wall and when the shad come up, they'll pin them up against the wall. So we're just looking for that one good bite. That's all we're looking for right now. Oh, 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 we got a good one on. I'll just kind of get him away from the, from the, uh... oh yeah. This is the kind of fish that you come for, saguaro, a lot. Now this isn't a real big giant, but it's probably at least five pounds. So a lot of guys don't get these. I switched over to a uh, brush hog. Oh, oh, don't get off yet, big guy. Big girl. Oh, yeah. Woo. That's a good way to start, guys. Look at that. And that's a nice fish, isn't it? That's a nice fish. Pretty. They're real black up here in the river, you know, so pretty neat. Nothing down the throat, so we'll just let this baby go, you know, and Good start. All right. Let's let this thing swim by. Let her go out. Back. There she goes. Whoo! That was nice. Caught that on a brush hog, just flipping, flipping in the trees. There was a bunch of trees out there. And you gotta Texas rig these things because uh they get stuck right in the trees. So what I'm doing is just Texas rigging this. Make sure you put this on, on nice and straight. So you just go in an eighth of an inch and then you want to hook it up and make sure that brush hog is nice and straight. Now, I'm just, uh, have a little light bullet weight on here so it falls nice and slow, a little quarter ounce. Of course, you know, I would have the bobber stopper on there, huh? <laughs> so a little bit later in the show when we go uh, in depth, with Gary's tips, we'll uh, we'll show you some other little tricks that I'm doing. Okay, so that's a good start for the first fish. So we're just going to kind of keep fishing and see what happens. All right, we'll just kind of the cameraman can just kind of kind of look over at the. Why are you breathing hard, Gary? Yeah, <laughs> you know what? You always see that on TV. All right, you know, everybody's breathing hard. It's like. I don't know what it is. It's not that you're doing something real strenuous, but but just get out of breath when you pull those things. I guess it's just the excitement. It's not that you're really strained that hard. So we'll just kind of mosey back over, over towards the river. I'll speed this little baby up a list a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I was just throwing it up against the current and just Letting it fall over there. One bite, one big fish. Well, that's good. Good way to start the morning. The sun's just creeping up over the mountain right now, so. We'll just kind of ease our way up here. Looks like a good area. 
it's, it's amazing how big those pumps must be in Canyon Lake to make this like a river going the other way. It should be going this way, but, but that's, uh, that's what they do. They just reuse the water, you know. We're just gonna cast right up there and let this thing kind of go right on down into there. The fish, when the, whatever way the current's facing, the fish are gonna be facing that way. So the water's coming the opposite way, going back into Canyon Lake. So we're gonna cast up and let that go right back in their face. But a couple weeks ago I was here and right in this little stretch here, I, I caught a seven and a six, back to back, two cast. I was like, oh my gosh, how often does that happen? So, so I'm just gonna kinda hang out and fish these rocks. I'm not fishing any brush here, but I actually I caught that fish way up there in that matted stuff, uh, way, way up there. It was just laying underneath there, but by the time I flipped the boat around, because I was going that way downstream or upstream, so I'm just kind of, you know, you get a bite and you have that anticipation that you're going to get another one. So, you know how that goes. We'll just cut, keep trying this and see if we can't stay up with this, but. Those, those uh, turbines and stuff that suck this water back out of Saguaro back in the canyon must be gigantic because it's like a river running. You can see the water. My line's just floating down like a huge river. So far, we're batting 100%. One bite, one fish. So that's pretty good. But we moved out onto the main lake now. We wanted to be with all the water skiers out here. Sometimes that boat action, washing the, the lake over and over, you know, can make those fish bite, you know, by stirring up the water in the shad and stuff. So we're just going real light for just to see if we can catch anything. We're using flick shake and we're just, we're just dragging it through out here in 18, 20 feet of water. And look, I'm either hitting the rock or, a, nope, I am not hitting the rock. That's what we're trying to catch, something just to catch a fish, you know. Hey! <laughs> So just a little one pounder, just flick shaking, a little worm. So typical little fish, not compared to what we were after in the river. We did get one big one up there and lost one. So, you know, um, there are big ones are out here too. So we're just gonna kind of keep moving around and trying to catch some more of these. So got a little bit of a audience. So what I'm doing is just, let me grab a worm and I'll show you. I'm just. Using zoom worms is what they are. And uh, they're just the little six, seven inch worms. And we're just wacky style on these worms, nothing. We got a flick shake worm, which consists of a little thing like this, and it's got a little wire on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna hook this worm right in the middle of its body. Let the water wire come up like this. And we're just going to use it like that. So when it goes down, you know, I'm going to hook a little bit more in the middle. When the fishing gets really, really tough, you know, or a lot of boat traffic, you can use these. And uh, sometimes it can be really good and catch, save you and just catch some fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cast back out. I probably came out here in deeper water. No, it's only 20. So I'm just going to kind of scoot around here. I'm just out here off a point and we're just gonna like throw this little thing around here and I've seen a few of them come up chasing shad. So we're just gonna play it around here and see if with the boat action and the waves make some of these fish bite. Oh, there's some more over behind me but chasing shad. They're not big fish out here they're just schoolers but you know they're fun if you can bring the kids out or they can save you a difference of either catching fish or not catching fish. So how to work this thing is I just throw it in and then I'm just letting that sink and sometimes you can just, you know, work it in like this and every time you just kind of uh, reel it in and just kind of flick it like this, that's why they call it the flick shake, that worm just kind of goes in and out like that and that's what the fish see and that's how they bite it. When they're real active, you can throw it out and just 
just let it go to the bottom sometimes if the fish are on the bottom. So what I'm doing is just watching the bottom and the grass comes out to about 15 feet. I'm in 18, 19, 20 feet of water. So I'm just out from all that heavy grass that's, that plagues the, the shoreline over here. So we're just gonna let that go on down. If there's something active there, you might take it, you know, and if not, I'll just kind of flick it in a couple times like this. I keep hearing them jumping, but I don't see them. So they just move around. These fish just move around and they just eat shad out here. That's what they do. So I'm gonna stay out here in 18, 20 feet and hope that one of the uh, boats don't run us over. So we're just gonna cast out in front of us here. Just keep an eye out for uh, fish coming up, chasing shad, the bass. There he is. Fishing this flat again, I decided to try something a little bit different. Picked up the old drop shot, you know, something a little bit different. Seems like I got a little bit bigger one than, than I bargained for. He's coming up. Man. Oh, he's not that big, but you know what? He's bigger than that one pound size. So we're just going to get him a little. There we go. Nice little fat, chunky two pounder. Yeah, yeah look what he bit. The good old drop shot. Morning, Don. <laughs> well, he gave a pretty good fight. I'm using this spinning rod. I got a new rod. I'm gonna let this go while we're talking here. I got this new rod from the Bass Pro Shop, you know, and uh, it's a Garcia, Alba Garcia. They carry over there. And I'm using this uh, Nano Fill. If you, if you guys that have spinning rods, the Nano Fill, if you haven't tried it, uh, you don't get any more twist on here at all. So you might wanna try it. Uh, it doesn't twist up at all and it feels, it's very sensitive, it's a type of braid, so might want to give it a try. Um, I like it. I don't fish spinning reels a whole lot, but because of uh, getting tangled up so much. So basically I just have that little four and a half, five incher on there. I've got some uh, eight pound test floral carbon on here and a little drop shot, 10 inches. So let's give it another try out here and see if uh, you fall like a bigger fish. I got one. Here he comes. Ooh, nice one too. Whoa! That's a nice fish, you know what? Look at that. I'm not gonna flip this in the boat because he's There we go. Can't show the worm, but anyway, this is a nice little fish. Nice and chunky. Cool. We'll just release him back in. Got another drop shot fish. Ooh, this one's pretty big. It's a nice one. I won't be able to flip this on eight pound test. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, that was a quick release. I, I hope you got that on film. <laughs> oh, good old morning, Don. I always say at the seminars at the Bass Pro Shop, if I could fish with one color, it would be morning dawn. If I could only take one worm, I'd buy the, the morning dawn and that would be it. So just basically just throwing it out in the weeds and just kind of pulling it through the weeds. Well, we got him to the boat anyway. That's, at least we got to see him. They get bigger when you don't see them, so. There's one. Oh no. Stuck in the cable. 
had a fish on. Went down in the rope of the buoy line. Oh, I know. That doesn't sound right, does it? Let me just get over him and see if he'll come off. Didn't feel like a real big one, but. These uh, buoys that run along here have uh, rope and stuff, and I think I got the rope. I uh, know I got the rope. He isn't swimming away. Nope. I think that's the close of it. I think it's about 114 degrees out here, and we just about had enough. You know, the clouds are coming in, it's noon, it's hot, and all we've been catching is small fish, so. Uh oh. Oh, no. Oh, he came off. Oh, the last one of the day. Little but mighty. So he was caught in the buoy line. <laughs> He's a little guy. All right, so we want to thank you for watching the video. And again, we are at Saguaro Lake in August, 114 degrees. So with that, you all have a good time. Good time fishing. Take your loved ones, your kids, your grandkids. And we'll see you on the next one.